Hello and welcome to Community Chats. I'm your host, Ali Hammer, and today we're joined with Richard from Cloud10. Richard, thank you so much for being here today. And Cloud10 typically works a lot with public sector. So can you give us an example of how you've helped the Australian government to innovate? Sure, thanks, Ali. So over the last five years, we've worked extensively with public sector uh, across state and federal government, uh, healthcare and education. So one specific example of that would be our recent work with a large federal government department in helping them establish a secure and scalable foundational infrastructure in AWS. And we use that to deploy a data lake with advanced analytics capabilities. So this has enabled the customer to gain uh, deeper business insights into their existing data sets, uh, leverage data from previously inaccessible data and providing them with the ability to collaborate at scale. Wow. So we, if we expand on this in, inaccessible data topic a little bit further, we were able to use Amazon Textract Managed Service to read and analyze data from scanned images and PDF files that were previously reliant on manual data entry. The Textrex service was not only able to drastically improve the analysis time of scanned data, but through machine learning algorithms, we were able to infer sentiment and intent that could then be analysed with other data sets. What an incredible achievement. That's amazing. And can you walk us through the process of how you transform the government to become more data driven? And also, what were the benefits? So the first steps towards the cloud formation is always establishing a secure cloud foundation on which we can build. So whereas previously this had required acquiring rack space in a data center facility, setting up power, networking, compute and storage, the Amazon Cloud provides a range of established tools and services to massively streamline digital transformation. So through the use of build and delivery automation alongside AWS services such as landing zones and control tower, we can quickly and repeatedly stand up what would have previously been a complex infrastructure. So in addition to the speed to market and the reduction in deployment and management costs, one of the main benefits is that we can create and maintain continuous security compliance. Wow, that, that's amazing. It's, it's so interesting hearing about what you're doing and the transformation that's occurred. And recently the Australian government has launched a plan to invest almost $800 million to enable businesses to take advantage of you know, digital technologies. So how can companies leverage this investment? We see it on the news, but how can they actually take advantage of it? Yeah, correct. So about two years ago, the government basically mandated a cloud first policy. So that means that all new workloads and applications should be looking to public cloud hosting by default. So in order to support this, uh, Amazon in introduced a whole of government agreement. So which was negotiated between AWS and the Digital Transformation Ener uh, Agency. And that allows uh, all government agencies to, to consume cloud services a lot quicker and easier. It also enables them to benefit from discount pricing uh, and, and a uh, the ability to leverage things like uh, solution architects and professional services and access to the partner networks such as ourselves. Wow, awesome. And given you work with the public sector, I mean, I'm assuming that they're extremely cautious about security. So how do you ensure that the information that you guys have and take care of is super secure when dealing with customers like the Australian government? Yeah, absolutely. So security uh, is the top priority. So most of our customers will need to comply to some set of mandated uh, regulatory controls, such as APRA, or uh, in case of the government, and that's the ISM, the Information Security Manual, which is the government mandated security policy. So these controls consist of a range of security mandates, such as encryption at rest and in transit, vulnerability scanning and identity management. So what's been really useful uh, on the Amazon side is that um, AWS has got 64 services pre IRAP certified. Now IRAP is the certification standard which is used to measure uh, basically that you, you've ticked all the boxes for the ISM. So now we can use those services and, and the bulk of the services which we build or solutions we build for customers are built around those 64 services. Those 64 services include compute, storage, database, uh, streaming, uh, a whole raft of services that we can build upon and we know that they're compliant out of the box. Now, on top of that, we work with a number of security providers uh, to ensure that we have commercial grade firewalls, uh, web application firewalls and things like that also embedded in so that we can maintain uh, out of the box compliance when we build a solution and we can ensure that ongoing the continuous compliance within that environment. Wow, I mean, you definitely go to extreme measures to, to make sure our data is secure. So I'm grateful for that. And if a customer has been watching this video and they're interested to work with you or reach out, how do they get in touch? So uh, via our website, we've got www.cloud10.com.au. There's a, there's a range, I mean, that, that shows all our services, but there's also contact points with on there. Uh, also on LinkedIn, we've got um, 
uh, a presence there. And uh, we, we're quite prolific on social media with things like Facebook and Twitter as well. Oh, I like it. All right. Well, we'll leave your website in the show notes below. So thank you so much, Richard. Really appreciate your time. And we'll see you next time. No problem. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.